and being married doesn't resolve that situation. And since bigamy is against the law, that's the other argument. The even at you know, you should follow the law of the land. Bigamy is against the law. So she can only marry one of them men on paper. The other man is just in a little contract, a little verbal contract with her. Thought y'all didn't agree that that was a marriage. Thought y'all didn't agree with that. I thought that y'all believe that the only marriages that were valid were monogamous marriages that were performed through the state. Correct? Or no? Because when I started talking about polygyny, everybody thought I was crazy. When I was talking about getting married, you know, through your religious institution or whatever, I, that's not a marriage. Oh, oh. So she just got her side dude. She just got her husband to agree to her side dude. Is that it? Or was we, or husband? They're using the word husbands, plural, as if polyandry was somehow not bigamy and therefore allowed in any of the 48 contiguous states or any of the United States territories. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter four, starting off at verse five and it reads this, behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahweh my power commanded me that ye should do so in the land, whether ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statues and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops of great millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Akium out there on the highways and the byways. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Salutations to you speckled birds, you Israelite foreigners. And Shalom to the Akwaf sitting and listening in silence as the scriptures say to do so. Deuteronomy chapter 4, starting off at verse 5, and it reads this Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahweh my power commanded me. That ye should do so in the land, whether ye go to possess it, to possess it, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom, and your understanding, in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statues, and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So we have the blueprint. The ordinance, the instructions from Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah to govern our people righteously, decently, and in order to bring forth righteous, balanced judgment on every matter that is placed upon earth. How to govern our people, how to go about, uh, 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 you know, all types of uh, uh, different avenues with our people, different subjects, different uh, situations. And you know how to treat the land, how to treat the earth, the animals, etc. How to go about everything. That knowledge, wisdom, and understanding was given to us. And as you heard from the uh, clip, you know a lot was spoken about. A lot we can make out of this uh, uh, clip. But I just want to focus on what is actual marriage. What does the Lord see marriage as? Do you have to go to the justice of peace and sign documentation? To have a contract with uh, basically the government, not just the state, but the government. Do you have to, uh, you know, really uh, 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 conform to Esau's philosophy of marriage, which is a, 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 a business, which is not which is not really a marriage, because you know, in, in this captivity, when you sign those papers and you get a divorce. The woman basically gets everything, and the man is basically left with nothing. But let's see, let's see how the Lord sees marriage, and we're going to keep it uh, short and sweet and straight to the point. 
And I don't want to rock this out, get edified off of this. So I'm going to go to the book of uh, Genesis chapter 24. And I'm going to start off at verse 64 and it reads this. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his, into his mother's Sarah's tent and took Rebekah. So when he brought Rebekah into the tent, was there a, a judge in there? Was there a, 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 a court clerk that said, sign these documentations and that I now pronounce you man and wife? No. You know, were they playing chess, checkers, Xbox 360, PlayStation 5? No. When it says uh, he took her, that means he would he went in on to her. He got to know her. You know, he uh, uh, took her virginity. The Lord uh, uh, joined them together. And we're going to prove that because there's no such thing as free will. And Isaac brought her into his mother, Sarah's tent and took Rebecca and she became his wife and he loved her. So there was no Judge Johnson in there. You know, so, you know, sign these papers before y'all get married. You know, you got to you got to uh, hold your hand up and repeat after me. And he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So the actual union of marriage is when a man goes in into a woman, break that hymen and also has that token of her virginity from those bed sheets. OK. And we're going to read that too. But we're going to prove that true marriage is the Lord bringing two people together and them consecrating that marriage is through intercourse. Okay? And then, of course, you know, uh, in the book of Tobit, it says that they uh, had a uh, basically a, a marriage. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, like a marriage, a, a satrimony, a. a I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but y'all know what I'm saying. Uh, for 14 days. Okay, for 14 days. They had a marriage, a, a celebration for 14 days. Okay, because he, he, he as, as it says in the book of Tobit 2, that, you know, he, he took her into the uh, uh, the marriage chamber. Okay, to, to uh, uh, you know, uh, can't think of the word right now, but Salaki, like, I know what I'm saying. To seal the deal, let's just say that. Well, let's jump here. Because it's the most high that brings you. It, it doesn't matter how much uh, res, as they say, or game that you think you have and how you got that chick. It was already written for you to be with that woman. According to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. So this is the book of, uh, and this, as a matter of fact, we're going to go see what Yahweh Shai says about marriage. This is the book of St. Matthew chapter 19, starting off at verse 4, and it reads this. And this is red letter. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twine shall be one flesh. And now again, I must say this, you, you'll have these wacky tacky slave plantation 501c3 Christians try to use that scripture to say that a man can only be with one woman. OK, when they don't have the true understanding of that scripture. But you sincere Aki and Wa'akwaf have that understanding. OK, but here's the point right here in verse uh, six. Wherefore, <clears throat> they are no more twine. But one flesh. What therefore the most high Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai have joined together. Let no man put asunder. So it's the Lord, you know, making that marriage complete, making that marriage uh, uh acknowledged, making it uh confirmed, making it so. It's not no damn contract, it's not no damn justice of peace, it's not no damn court system. Okay, it's the Lord, man. Matter of fact, 
Let's prove it, man. Let's prove that. We're going to get two scriptures to prove that. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 23, and it reads this. O Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Okay? It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. So the Lord is guiding us. The Lord is giving us uh, 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 the direction that we must go. Okay? So again, it doesn't make a difference about you seeing her and you thought she was beautiful and uh, uh, you, what you said to her and you being different and, you know, it was just something about you and everything else. You know, you feel like you've known this person all your life. Well, guess what? That the Lord put those feelings in you. The Lord made you be at that place and her at that same place at whatever time it was, whatever day, whatever month, whatever year. Everything is of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Matter of fact, let me get one more scripture. And we'll jump to the next thing. Bear with me. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 37. And I'm going to read verse 23. And it reads this. The steps of a good man are ordered. Do you hear that? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And he delighteth. In his way. So there's no such thing as free will. Your life is already written out before you're born. It was predestinated for you to be with the women that you have been with in this life and prior lives. And I truly believe, you know, through the spirit, that the woman that we have been with and the woman that we encounter, we've probably more than likely encountered these women in our past lives. Okay. And again, Esau's authority, Esau's way, I'm going to be just clear and, uh, clear and blunt about it. Bullshit. The ways of Yahweh, Shem Yahweh Shai, and his laws are not grievous, but Esau's laws are uh, op oppressing. Uh, they afflict you. They, they, they make you bemoan this man being in rulership. But the laws of Yahweh, Shem Yahweh Shai, are righteous, balanced, all together. And we'll prove that through scripture. But let me grab this one first. This is uh, the book of 1 John chapter 3. It's like in 1 John chapter 3. It's like in 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of the Most High, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. The Lord's commandments are not grievous. But with Esau being in authority, his commandments are grievous. His commandments are uh, uh, oppressing, oppressing our nation, man, because they're unrighteous. They're wicked decrees, man. OK, point blank, period, man. So this is the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse nine. The fear of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, is clean, enduring forever. The judgments, OK, and that also includes the laws and the statues of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai are true and righteous altogether. So that 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 reflects on his commandments, his laws, his statutes not being grievous, his judgments not being grievous. OK, the ordinance that he gave us to govern our people and how to uh, uh, walk correctly in the light is not grievous. So the concept of marriage, the way the Lord sees it, is perfect. It's balanced. It's righteous, man. Not not going to no goddamn justice of peace at the circuit court, signing a fucking contract to basically uh 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 uh, uh put your uh marriage in the hands of the state, man. To give the woman uh, 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 a a damn uh, 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 to put the woman over you, to put the woman in the pedestal over you, man. You are literally, when you sign the contract in, the, in, in, in Babylon to get married, you are literally saying, you can have my kids, you can take all my money, you can take the house, the car, I'll pay your alimony, I'll pay your Title IV D. You are literally signing away your life and giving away everything that you are going to gain in that marriage. Because as we know and as we see, marriage does not last long here in Babylon and women initiate 
90% of marriage, okay? Initiate 90% of marriage, man. But I quoted something earlier about the token. I'm going to get an example of it because that's also in the law. And you're supposed to give that token to the parents to show that the, uh, the daughter was pure. That she hasn't been to flowers, she's not uh, polluted, and she wasn't playing the harlot. But I'm just going to go to the point to prove that uh, it's part of the law. And we'll close out there because the point is made. So this is going to be the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22. And I'm going to read, now you can go read this yourself. I'm going uh, to start off at verse 15. Then shall the father of the damsel... And her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elder of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hateth her. Now, again, you can go back and see what this is talking about, but I'm just trying to show you that, uh, that this is in the law, okay, the token of the, uh, uh, of the wife's virginity. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. So in this concept, what I'm reading right now, is showing that the man just had hatred towards the woman. He didn't want to be with her after he lay with her. And come to find out, he lied about it. She, wasn't, she was actually a virgin. Okay, uh... And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city, and the elders of that city shall take the man and chastise him. And why are they doing that? Because he lied. You know, obviously, whatever the case may be, whatever he didn't uh, like in the woman once he uh, got with her, he tried to get out of it by saying that, you know, she wasn't. Uh, 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 a virgin that she was already deflowered and she was playing a harlot, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, that that's part of the customs when it comes to marriage. You have to give that token of the virginity towards the father and the mother to actually show that the daughter was pure. And what else happens to him? They chastise him. What else happens to him? Verse 19. And they shall admirance him in a hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel because he have brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all the days. It's like all his days. But it says, uh, if, if it's the truth, but if this thing be true, the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel. Okay, on that cloth, on that bed, that bed, that bedspread. Okay. Then shall they bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she she have wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house, so shalt thou put evil away from among you. Okay. So those are the customs and how Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai sees marriage, man. Point blank period, whether you like it or not, man. And that's what we follow. We follow the customs of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, man. So, man, Lord willing, I hope and I pray that this is informative, edifying, and uplifting to the true, sincere Akim Wa Akwaf. Kohulayam La. Abanawa Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwa Dash. Wafa Wada, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwa Dash. For putting the spirit on me to do this lesson. So, you know, Lord willing, to the next one, I have a thumb. So with that, I'm just going to say, Shalom. Doesn't resolve that situation. And since bigamy is against the law, that's the other argument. The Even at, you know, you should follow the law of the land. Bigamy is against the law. So, she can only marry one of them men on paper. The other man is just in a little contract, a little verbal contract with her. Thought y'all didn't agree that that was a marriage. Thought y'all didn't agree with that. I thought that.
that y'all believe that the only marriages that were valid were monogamous marriages that were performed through the state, correct? Or no? Because when I started talking about polygyny, everybody thought I was crazy. When I was talking about getting married, you know, through your religious institution or whatever, I, that's not a marriage. Oh, oh. So she just got her side dude. She just got her husband to agree to her side dude. Is that it? Or was we or husband? They're using the word husbands, plural, as if polyandry was somehow not bigamy and therefore allowed in any of the 48 contiguous states or any of the United States territories. 